Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the most dashing deck in Clash Royale history. We're gonna be leapfrogging everywhere with the double mirror bandits and the golden knight. Tornado is gonna come up clutch, clumping up our opponent's units, so the golden knight has a paved pathway directly towards our opponent's tower. There weren't too many dashing cards in the game, unfortunately. Hopefully Clash Royale continues to add more of them, or maybe not if you guys hate playing against these type of cards, but I'm just in it for the memes. So I wasn't able to have the entire deck be dashing, but the charged up princes come pretty close as they sprint towards success. I can't wait to get an unbelievable amount of bandits and golden knights on the map to the point that my opponent doesn't know where units are going. Let's maximize our dash and clash and assert dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. A huge thanks to everyone that's using Creator Code Sir Tag to support the channel. Here we go. The most dashing deck in Clash Royale is off to an astounding start because we've got Golden Knight and we got Bandit in our hands. You guys already know. Why not just drop them both at the river and see what happens? Let's go. You aren't ready. Oh, the dashes are dominant. And I love it. I can't believe I just did that, man, that damage. That's so dumb. I feel like that shouldn't be possible. I just took out half this man's tower. Okay, so here's the thing, guys. I don't have anything for that cannon card besides the mirrored up Dark Prince. Level 13 cards and grand challenges, they build different. That Dark Prince is ready to hammer down the dominance on the tower. Oh, I think that we can kill the Magic Archer too if I tornado. <laughs> yes, I'm a Disney movie villain with my laugh, but guys, it was so worth it. Every single time. I'm just gonna make him a super sad sir. Oh, wait, why was the Dark Prince crying? The Dark Prince made him cry, so then the Dark Prince felt bad, so he joined his team and started crying for him. That's the only explanation here. Also, you guys are gonna be like, Jake, the Prince doesn't dash. I'd be agreeing with you, but he's still a very dashing sir. He's one of the most handsome cards in the game. Look at his mustache. Look at his getup. Look at the little pony that he has. I want to see my lungs. He is a, a true classy sir. Anyway, we're going to go in for the Golden Knight dash because we want to just dash everywhere. And <laughs> we're moving fast out here. Oh my goodness, that that's beautiful. I love it. And then I think that the Firecracker isn't really a dash. It's kind of like a scuffed gymnastics move where it kind of goes backward. And I don't even know if it's safe, you know? I feel like you would never want to perform the action where you're getting blown back by a firearm to that extent. But the firecracker, I guess she's used to it. All the other things, I feel like, ah, you're kind of like trained for it, you're prepared for it. You don't have control over where that firearm's taking you. You have no clue where, where it's going. All right, we're going to go for double princes here, and I think it's in my best interest to go in for a bandit in the left-hand lane, because... If he spends all of his elixir on one side, yeah, that's going to be able to defend us. But if uh, he doesn't have any elixir, that's a different story. So I'm going to go for a bandit and then go Dark Prince here. I don't necessarily care too much about defending because you guys know the deal with this deck. It is pure dashing potential. So I'm going to activate King Tower after I take the tower, of course. But my first priority was going for the dashy boys and girls and making this man's world pure pain. So... I think this game's over. 24 seconds remaining. There's no way for him to come back. A few dashes later. This man was really out here trying his hardest, but it didn't matter. GG well played in peace out. He's a super angry sir midway through the game. And he's angry now. Hopefully that uh, turns around for him. But you guys already know, we dash it on to the next one. There we go. We got a game against Toxic with a K at the end. Wow, you're pretty original, dude. What a unique name. We're gonna sauce out of good luck and see what he's gonna do. He might have a couple cards up his sleeve that I'm not used to because he's got some cards in his name out here. Okay, that's that's interesting. That's wild. You're going to go for an Electric Spirit, Skeletons, and Miners. So that's a lot of Elixir. Does he? He has nothing. Literally nothing. I'm just going to go and click the Golden Knight ability, and it's going to dash on the tower, and he's going to cry. Because he's got the Rail Delivery Rocket Cycle deck, and he didn't have Elixir for anything else in time, so he just clicked the dash. <laughs> and Golden Knight's gonna bash. <laughs> My goodness, I love this deck. Maybe if you go in for skeletons here and we zap them preemptively. Oh, let's go, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Think in place for days out here. He wasn't ready. His body simply wasn't prepared for that. I'm playing pretty well with this deck because I just like spamming stuff. It's kind of in my DNA. I was born for this. And I knew his card cycle. I knew what elixir he had. He wasn't going to be able to get a Dark Prince down. So it's looking good. All right. So we're going to go in for the bandit in the back. And he's going to rock it. All right. Uh, 
I guess I want to go in for the Golden Knight. And if you do that, you're not going to have much Elixir anymore. Because you rocketed a Bandit for a negative 3 trade in single Elixir. I don't think you can actually get away with that. So I'm going to put that to the test and see if we're the best. I'm going to go in for Double Princes. And then I'm going to click the ability because it's going to be able to dash onto the tower because you can't get the town in time. <laughs> but we're taking your tower down instead, bro. Something's going down in time. And that tower's timely execution was great. So I'm going to go for a Bandit here, and I can follow up with a Firecracker. Dude, there's literally like no way for you to come back. If you're running this deck out of everything in Clash Royale, like literally everything in Clash Royale, it has the least comeback potential. You only do damage with Miners and Rockets. You are better off just leaving, but I don't think you're going to do that. So you're probably just going to waste 44 more seconds of my life, but that is what it is. A few seconds later. This guy tried his absolute hardest to take one tower. I didn't defend a single thing, and I tried to three crown him. And he wasted so much time. But in the end, at least we got the tower to one, two, three. That's pretty cool. Here we go. We got a game against Destructor. I feel like he's just, you know, itching to get destroyed right now. It's in his name. He wants to have it happen. So I'm going to go for a Golden Knight in the back. And if you want to drop anything in the other side, oh, let's go. I wanted to play against Log Bay. I want to show you guys that I can win with Zap. Hopefully this works out because, oh, wait, what? What am I witnessing right now? If I can yoink that closer into our stuff, we can get the Bandit to Leapfrog on the tower immediately. That worked out way better than I thought. Because now I can Firecracker on the other side. I can shut down the Valkyrie and I can kill all of the skeletons. So usually against log bait, you want to bait out the Valkyrie and then just cannibalize their tower. You guys saw this before and we're going to try to do it the exact same way with this version. No matter what he plays, even if he's got Witch, which is way more annoying for me than original log bait because he's able to spawn an endless amount of skeletons. So do I go for a bandit behind the giant skeleton? If I drop it in front, it's just going to go into the bomb. So I can't really have that happen. I'm sorry to say. This is not the way we want to play. All right, so the bandit's going to dash onto the tower or he's going to Valk. Valks. Do we get a Zapparino on skeletons that are coming down for the Dark Prince to connect to the tower? I don't think it's necessarily worth it because we have all this damage to the right-hand side. But, you know, we could make some crazy plays. I think he's just going to let it happen anyway. Wait, what? People are crazy in Clash Royale. Like, you realize if you take one of my towers and I take your tower that's super low and we're in an even spot, that's going to come back to bite you in the butt. Okay, so this is fun. I'm going to click the ability. It's going to dash and leapfrog onto all the little skeletons. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he poisons, too. <laughs> it's fitting. We clapped at the same time. He can't see me, but hopefully he's eventually able to see me. Hopefully he knows that we're twins. He's clapping, and I'm clapping his towers. And we're also, you know, getting that clap emoji from him. Oh, and I'm clapping in real life, so I guess in three situations. I'm going to Firecracker here. I think that it's probably worth it. I don't know. I just want to keep spamming more Firecrackers. I, I just love the card. So I'm going to Firecracker here on the right-hand side so then I can mirror it up. And then last second, I wanted to go for the double Firecracker because it's way harder for him to defend if he's not ready for it. And then it's also able to get chip damage onto the tower. So that's why we cycled our first one. And I was like, you know what? If I catch him off guard, he's, he's just going to take so much damage. He can't guard me. Okay, so with the King Tower activated, it allows you to defend Goblin Barrels, even if they have a tank for the Goblin Barrel. So that's one of the things that's the most scary. Him poisoning the Firecracker and not killing it. On the edge of destruction. On the edge of death. She refuses to die and hopefully makes our opponent die. Okay, I need, I need, you, to, I need you to fulfill the prophecy, though. Okay, all right. I get it. You're a bit of a savage. Yo, this Firecracker is still out here. She's still... Oh, my goodness. Does that... No, no. Tell me it ain't so, bro. Tell me it ain't so. Even if you have to lie to me right now. I'm going to go click the Golden Knight ability, and that's going to dash on a tower, and you're going to lose the game because you spent too much elixir with your stupid goblin barrel. Deserved! GG. Well played. And peace out, buddy. It was a pleasure playing against you and tearing your towers to pieces because, you know, I've got Tornado, and I've got Zap, so even if the Firecracker magically missed, we secured that back. Obviously, if we got the double dashers, you already know that's what we're doing today. Especially if the skeletons are going to be poised in a position to stop that. And then I go in for a zap and then they're not going to stop it. Oh, you didn't know that they weren't going to stop it. You didn't know. So you overspent and you made me sad. Well, that was kind of bad. But it is what it is. If you want to go in for an expo, I've got so many things that I can spam at the river. And this is going to work out pretty well. The only thing I don't like right now is because 
cycle a Dark Prince or a Prince in the back, I would have just gotten Expo on the other side. So I was leaking Elixir waiting for him to Expo. So that was the, obviously the right decision. It worked out pretty well for me. And now I can go for the Bandit to dash onto the Expo because we cleared a pathway for our Bandit with our amazing Prince. He's a chivalrous sir, letting the ladies go first, dealing the damage. So that's pretty good. Do we want to go in for a Golden Knight ability? Probably not. It's not going to be able to break through that regardless. If I want to go in for a bandit with the Tesla out of cycle, we need the Valkyrie or Knight out of cycle as well. That's the only way we're going to get damage. I go for Firecrackers, that could give him a King Tower activation. Not that good for me. So I'll bandit in the back and we'll see what's happening. Usually when we play against a decent expo player like this guy, I want to go in for firecrackers at the river when the archers are aligned. So maybe we can make him have a pretty bad time. Oh, that did that that will dash. That's gonna dash. It's gonna crash. It is gonna bash on that tower. Let's go, guys! Level 13 bandit just did half of his tower. And it was like into an ice spirit, all these other things. It's crushing his spirits and it's crushing his morale and his actual spirit as well. He'll love to see it. If I go for a tornado, I think that could be good because I could tornado it closer to the tower and then, you know, just eat and delete and then get the, oh yes. Oh yes, that's beautiful. That's so dumb. But I also don't have a direct way of getting damage. Unless, nah, I do have a direct way. I just do that. That's, that's the most direct way of playing Clash Royale I've ever seen. Oh no, okay. Well, that's gonna lock on to me. That's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> I think it's okay, though, because if I go for a dashy boy again, and then I click the dash, even if you drop units nearby, I'm guaranteed to kill them and break through. You have the expo on the other side. Hmm. This guy seems like a pretty good expo player, like always going opposite lane, like all the time. He's never really fumbled that. I can't click the ability on the right-hand side, unlike a skeleton king or archer queen that would have won me the game there. It's a little bit different with the golden boy. Also, 700 HP. I don't know if you guys have ever been in this spot against Expo where you're like, you know, I just want to take your tower. Please let me win. And then have a really long and pouring game at the end. That's what's happening now. <coughs> or maybe not. Maybe the Golden Knight's just going to dash and crash. Oh, let's go. Wait, I think I can zap this and then have the, the bandit hit once. Yes! Let's go, baby. No more time is stolen from me. You get out of this game, baby. I hate when you play against Expo players that you know that you're going to beat, but it's just a matter of how much more time they're going to take away from your life. Here we go. We got a game against someone from the Clash Royale clan, but he forgot an E. I cannot tell you guys how many people misspell Clash Royale. Yes, I'm looking at you, YouTube. There's a lot of people that type it in incorrectly because I can look at your guys' searches. So... What is happening here? Do we want to go for a bandit in the back? Do we want to go in for a dark prince? I think we go for a bandit here. Yeah, I said in the back, but I'm not about that life. I just want to dash everywhere. Also, the firecracker hit, it missed. That's beautiful. I can activate King Tower with the mirrored up bandit. Oh, no, no. I already activated King Tower because I have tornado. <laughs> I can activate it again for good measure. Okay. Uh, I wonder what this guy's going to be planning right now. Because if he goes in for a hog rider... Wow, you dash it through and still dealing damage, despite our opponent having a cannon on the field. It don't matter. Just a little platform to leapfrog off of. That's awesome. All right, he's going to go in for a Valkyrie probably, right? And with the Valkyrie out of cycle, then we can release the Kraken and crack down with the craziest offense y'all have ever seen. Also, I don't know why this guy's got poison. He must have lost too many times against Graveyard. And then instead of having Earthquake, he's just like, screw it. Full send. Earthquake's a great counter, but I need poison. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. Okay, so if the Valkyrie's out of cycle, then we can get our best foot forward and just spam him. Oh my gosh, this deck is dumb. If he doesn't have Valkyrie in cycle, there's nothing he can do to defend. That's that's hilarious. I'm enjoying this deck thoroughly <laughs> while we are thoroughly dissecting every single one of our opponent's towers. A few weeks quits later. So basically, if you don't have Valkyrie in cycle, you can just gotta give up like this, man. There's nothing you can do. There was so much dashing at once in this game that this guy didn't know what to look at. I didn't know what to look at. And then before we even knew what was happening, his towers were gone. Like, subscribe for more daily videos, and have an awesome rest of your day. Oh, no.